to Moscow now, where President Putin has been welcoming delegations from 36 countries as he hosts the BRICS Summit of Emerging Economies. The Kremlin says the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, will also attend, although spokespersons for Mr. Guterres have not confirmed this. The Chinese President Xi Jinping, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the South African President Cyril Ramaphosa are all there. Moscow says the gathering shows that Western efforts to isolate Russia over its invasion of Ukraine have failed. Russian-Indian relations are characterized by a special privileged strategic partnership and continue to develop actively. Our foreign ministers are in constant contact. Trade turnover is in good condition. We welcome your decision to open a Consulate General of India in Kazan. Expanding the diplomatic presence of India in Russia will contribute to the further development of bilateral relations. Your Excellency, you have successfully led the BRICS Association since the beginning of the year. I would like to congratulate you on this. Over the past 15 years of its existence, our BRICS Association has created a special role for itself. And today, many countries of the world want to join the association. I look forward to our discussion within the BRICS framework tomorrow. Your Excellency, we are in regular contact regarding the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. As I said before, we believe that problems should be resolved peacefully, and we fully support the quickest establishment of peace and stability. In all our efforts, we give priority to humanity. And we are ready to provide any possible assistance in the future. Your Excellency, today we will have the opportunity to discuss all these issues. Once again, I would like to thank you. And that's the Indian Prime Minister there, Narendra Modi, and of course before him, the host of that BRICS summit, Vladimir Putin. Well, for a diplomatic assessment, I'm joined now in the studio by Ambassador Joe Keshi, a former Nigerian diplomat who served in many countries in Africa, Europe, and the Americas. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you for I having me, I know you'd probably be, be much more inclined to be discussing the, <laughs> the, the erosion of institutions in Nigeria. Sure, sure, But um, sure. we're, we're lucky that we have you, though, because you have a prolific international background. We saw Vladimir Putin there. He's gone from isolation to ruling the roost, as somebody put it today, with leaders from countries that make up almost half the world's population, including China, India, in Russia for that BRICS summit. How important is this event for Vladimir Putin in terms of optics? Very, very important and a great optics. Uh, coming at this time against the background of um, a near chaotic uh, global situation in which uh, for those who are not familiar with the international environment and listening to particularly the Western, you know, uh, perspective mm. of things, the way things are going. Um, the, 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 the conventional wisdom is to think that uh, Russia has been completely isolated, that it's not as strong as it should be. In fact, you don't see so many people think of Russia as, uh, as a world power anymore. Mm. But, uh, but I think today this, this is a very big optics for, for Putin and um, uh, he's doing all, the, all, uh, all his best to ensure that uh, the world sees what is going right. on with the large number of uh, heads of states in, Mos in um, Moscow. In Moscow but I mean, and, but uh, and sure. uh, the, I mean, the venue of the conference yes. itself. So it's a very big major optics. But how far do those optics go? I mean, is this evidence, for instance, as Moscow says, that Western efforts to isolate Russia over its invasion of Ukraine have failed? Not necessarily. I, I don't think it has failed. Mm. Um, certainly, the, the, uh, the economic sanctions remain in place. Uh, Russia today does not take part in, in, in a number of very key global um, you know, discussions. It's been uh, isolated, you know, like, for example, from the G20, 
um, G7 meetings and, and, and the rest. I'm not even sure if uh, Putin was um, at the last, uh, you know... No, UN General Assembly. UN, no, he UN General Assembly. So to some extent, he, he, the Russia remains um, a country isolated as a result of its own uh, uh, invasion mm. of, uh, you know, but this is a big optics for, you know, for him. And uh, you, you, you will notice or you will see that he's going to play this really to the end to ensure to convince you the world that look for everything it's yeah, to say to the world despite everything the western world in particular has tried to uh to do to us in russia we mm. are still standing tall and uh, you know say part of the global system and an in, and a, and a credible um, international player big international player mm. within the system and in terms of background the BRICS is a group of countries and emerging economies that see themselves as a kind of counterweight sure. to a Western-led world. They're challenging the political and economic dominance of more advanced Western countries. Is that right? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I think we should remind ourselves, and this is, um, I don't know whether to say one of the tragedies of this country, when our own internal... In Nigeria? Yes. Yeah. When our own internal contradictions and uh, poor... Uh, leaders, you know, poor leadership. Remember that the, the guy who first muted this idea of smaller nations coming together to have a strong voice within the international system was Professor Bola Jackie, my former boss and uh, lecturer. He came up with the concept of medium power. Yes, I remember Which is that. not quite different from what, you know, and the whole idea, just like BRICS, is to ensure that medium-level countries also have a voice within the international mm. you know, and, system. And, and beyond that, um, that uh, concept that Professor Akinyemi came up with, yeah. I mean, during the time of President Obasanjo, they were discussing very seriously about adding N to BRICS so that it sure, becomes sure. drinks, Interesting with the no, N we, being Nigeria. Yeah, so I think... We, we discussed that today at a meeting, and mm. uh, we just said the end disappeared. Mm. And, you know, Absolutely. But, but, that's, but that's true. That, that, that exactly was the whole objective, you know, but somewhere along the line. And for me, one of the most, I should use the word, painful was that when the discussion about BRICS started, I find it strange that Nigeria was not invited, you know. And, and now I see a lot of Nigerians arguing that we should uh, join. Yeah, I don't mind us joining, you know, but... For me, I just think that uh, we should spend more time build our own internal capacity yes, and strength. Right. They will come for us. Sure. But just returning to the BRICS um, group, mm -hmm. um, would it be accurate to say, for example, that Vladimir Putin sees the BRICS as a tool and an instrument to shape a new global order? I, I, I think where we are today, it would be very difficult for him to think that way. Mm. Uh, I'm not too sure that, uh, given the interplay of forces around the world, that um, uh, we are close to a new international order. Look, every member of this uh, community today, the BRICS, say have and they want to maintain very good relationship with the other bloc, like the United States mm. and its Western allies and things like that. So it's a balancing game everybody is going to, you know. Right. And, and just for the, for the benefit of those who don't know, yeah. BRICS is um, uh, it's, it's, it's a group of countries that are made up of, you know, the, the, you've got Russia in it, you've got India, you've got China, you've got Brazil, sure. and you have South Africa. Yeah, now they have Th those expanded. Those are the main countries. Yeah, they're those are the founders. Country, They've expanded right. to about 9 or 11 now, and uh, there are 24 more, you know, yeah. members particularly from the South, waiting to become members mm. of, uh, of BRICS. I think it's nice, in my view, to have such a group, you know, so that the, the Global South in particular could have a voice of its own. And not every time we go to a conference, it is dominated by the Western perspective, mm. you know. And um, I understand the Kremlin will be pushing the BRICS members. I mean, just along the lines of trying to set a new agenda and kind of move things in a different new global order. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to push the BRICS members at the summit to try to agree a new cross-border payment system yes, that similar, doesn't depend on the US Similar dollar. to the Swiss, yes. Right, that doesn't yeah. depend on... How difficult is that likely to be? 
I, I think it will be challenging, you know, somewhere along the line, because most of these countries we are discussing, mm. they're already part of the, you know, Western-dominated uh, sweet system, you know, that operates now. So it's going to take quite some time, you know. You know, when the discussion started, mm. uh, it was as if it was, uh, BRICS was being set up, you know, um, against particularly the dominance of the dollar. But along the line, everybody began to cool down on that concept that, no, this is not against the dollar, but they want a fairer international monetary system, you know, particularly uh, in terms of uh, the loans and everything that uh, they get from the British and Wood institutions, which was mm. particularly one of the reasons why this organization was, um, you know, was set up. So to set up this, it would take a long time because all members, of, I mean, those attending the conference today, those who have applied, those, you know, and those waiting in the wings like Nigeria, they are all members of the current SWIFT system. And they will be very reluctant to completely, you know, just break it without something well developed in place. Right. And that will not cause another global financial system crisis. Well, very, very interesting and very illuminating talking to you. And also, I think it was very good that you brought in the Nigerian element there, um, because that's something I think that would be um, illuminating for our audience. Uh, Ambassador Keshi, I want to thank you very much indeed. Ambassador Joe Keshi is a former Nigerian diplomat who served in many countries in Africa, Europe, and the Americas. Good to see you again. Thank you, and welcome back.